Here I am again, walking the same streets I did as a boy. I have been teaching a class in memoir writing at Stony Brook University's Manhattan campus on East 27th Street. After class, I patrol the territory of my childhood, my home, my neighborhood of Gramercy Park, with its private gated park that requires a key. Irving Place, named for Washington Irving and where he never lived. Madison Square, once the heart of Upper Crust, New York, and where the Gilbert Hall of Science blazed with its array of test tubes and bubbling amber liquids in great globes of glass. And the Lionel train store and its smell of machine oil and its nettings of tracks, whistles, and bridges. And 23rd Street, where the seedy novelty shops slouched in a row and 24th, the home of the horse market in the 1860s and its modern remnants, two saddlery shops, Miller's and Kaufman's, with their gleaming saddles displayed on bright wood mounts. The dusky brownstones aged gray by winter, the haberdasheries bearing headless mannequins and ill-fitting shirts behind smudged glass. Met Life, the tallest building in the world till 1913, the Flatiron Building on 23rd, the tallest building before that, where the phrase 23 skidoo originated for the wind gusts caused by the triangular shape of the structure. Zoot suitors would loiter at the point of the Flatiron to leer at women's skirts blown upward. Cops would shoo them away with 23 skidoo. And Murray Hill with its mixed air of elegance and menace. And the village, no East Village in those days, boisterous, still bohemian and St. Mark's Place, where my grandparents lived, and the old people, probably my age now, parked on folding chairs on the sidewalks in front of their tenements and gossiping in Yiddish, Polish, German. The women with their thick legs exposed, brown stockings short of the knees. And Union Square, where I listened to a black man with hair like Uncle Ben of the rice box and a rich baritone voice give a speech about the modern enslavement of the Negro. He was shirtless, wore a rope for a belt, and had tied himself up with chains. And Stuyvesant Park cleaved in two by Second Avenue, and nearby Stuyvesant Town, home of Virginia Lee Jones, Ginny Jones, my best girl, with her shining brown hair, kind eyes, and noble bearing, my wife-to-be, mother of our children-to-be, all within walking distance in an area of New York two and a half miles long and one mile wide, in which I first detected my life. Here I walk.